Oh, I mean, I've been here before, for sure. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, my name is Samuel. Um, I'm a solutions architect for Red Hat. I've been there for about one and a half years. Um, I've been kind of here in the Kubert community, kind of soaking in knowledge as well as just playing with it in the background for like, even before I joined, I love this technology. And uh, working with them to get the uh, whole, all things open Raspberry Pi cluster going and uh, looking forward to that. We have Kubert working on the Pi? We do. Oh, we cool. have, specifically, it's a ARM CPU. And uh, so we have, we have full uh, builds um, running nightly and uh, full CI support. Okay, yeah. Well, just, you know, Pi is not standard ARM, so it's kind of its own platform. So it was yeah. not taking it for granted. The, um, that's awesome. It makes for a great demo. Yeah, we, uh, we got a, a really good um, multi-CPU architecture demo plan. So it's, uh, it's not going to be just Raspberry Pi. It's going to be uh, whatever we can throw at the Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, I've uh, got like some, oh, sorry, go on. I was just going to say, uh, I have three CPU architectures and I'm throwing at it okay. just in, my, in myself. Yeah, wait, so you're going to have that at All Things Open? Yes. We're not going to okay. have it at All Things Open. It's going to be an internet distributed cluster. Got it. So it's going to be, uh, the idea is going to be have something like a, a Star Wars type uh, check-in of nodes. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to throw a stew under the bus and uh, that, as he starts his demo, he's not going to have any nodes. And then uh, we're going to have like a Star Wars, like gold one checking in, red one checking in. And um, so we should be able to build up the cluster within a, a few seconds. Uh, as far as the differences in ARM, um, as far as Pi's variant versus others, I've got some Pine RK3566 and another variant of a rock chip. Uh, this is a uh, Rock Pro 64, which is also you can run it with Fedora IoT, but I'm using it for this. And then, you know, NVMe of things because it has a PCI Express slot, which is pretty cool. And I've got um, Quartz 64, which are dev boards. So, you know, they don't even have HDMI working, but you can run them headless pretty well. Um, and going to be joining those in the cluster as well as that thing that's going to act as a gateway, which you can keep module with an IoT board on top of it, for my side at least. Okay, uh, let me let me follow up with you on chat because um, I used to bring a uh, OpenShift microcluster around uh, to shows all over the place, um, and I did some stuff in terms of case building, etc. Uh, that might be fun to do. If uh, you're volunteering to join us, that would be pretty sweet. Well, no, I can't make it to ATO. I would, be ship I would be shipping something. I would be shipping something. Uh, uh, let me uh, post in the, the super thread that we have going here, okay. just so folks are aware. Yep. Yeah, man, we're running. Um, this plan is still to run like Cube Admin versus uh, K3s, right? Uh, I'm still unsure. Um, I think we're we're really learning leaning towards uh, K3s. Okay, yeah. Just I'm for uh, uh, because none of us have experience with it, so I think it would it would be cool to understand what they have going on. Sure. Um, what's the what what happened between um, Wednesday and this Wednesday that I missed? Because I've been posting like and making K um, Cube Admin things. Um, in the last week, uh, I believe people have just been getting their systems online. Okay. So, Is there um, like a th thread that I missed or something? Cause from what yeah, I heard, we, we moved, we moved to the super thread. Has, Where did well, what I'm trying to say is I thought we moved to the super thread last Wednesday. And from what I heard, we were kind of shifting from K threes to cube admin. So is that? Oh, I could be behind. I, I lost my laptop all day yesterday for doing other testing. Oh, so. okay. Well, yeah, I was, um, 
the reason I asked was because I was um, I was almost done with the the Raspberry Pi image that just had keep admin and container D or whatever you wanted pre baked in, so you all you all could literally just download the um, the ISO and DD it to an SD card, and then you'd have a keep admin ready thing to just join up. Okay. But uh, if you if yeah, you I'm, all are I'm going totally to okay. out, then I'm open that? to trying that out. Okay. Cool. Okay, so uh, all things open is proceeding nicely. Um, we have to um, take a step back and talk about KVM forum. Uh, this has been a, a Red Hat priority now, and uh, Aliche really needs our support. Aliche, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, hi guys, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. Um, so I've been asked to um, lead um, a buff at KVM Forum. That would be in two weeks. Um, we got one hour um, slot. So do, I was asked to, to do an intro about Qvert. So this is, I can do, but um, it will be great to have some help from uh, uh, maybe Kubler maintainer or somebody that just uh, want to help. Um, I mean, that would be just basically answer question and maybe talk about um, problems and future direction uh, of Kubert. And I don't feel very confident to do it alone. That's why it would be great to have some support from the community. Are you confident about talking about Kubert generally? Um, so the initial plan was a 10 minutes presentation. Um, this, yes, I mean, it's just in some introduction. What I'm a little bit more worried is talking about future direction or maybe future main feature that could come in, in Kubert. So we have a, a really good roadmap laid out in the due diligence document um, that can definitely um, provide um, some talking points and gobble up a good 15 minutes. Yeah, we could, well, um, most of the BOF is supposed to be sort of open floor for people who are interested. Um, like the only reason why we're doing a demo is that we figure most of the KVM forum attendees won't be that familiar with Kubert. Um, I, I have a feeling that questions, um, questions about how to do things are going to be, are, are going to be more likely than questions about say future planning. Okay. Because when somebody's never used something before, they're not necessarily gonna jump to asking about um, you know, what's on your roadmap. Um, so really anybody who knows how to use Kubert really well could help out here um, by at answering questions. Um, and Red Hat is the main sponsor of KVM Forum. So we have passes available if somebody wants to commit to attending um, in order to uh, support the BOF. Do we know what time um, our slot is? Um, yeah, I, they proposed, uh, let me just find it. Uh, it was before my PTO, so I forgot okay. it. Uh, but uh, we have already uh, suggested if it was not busy. Um, yeah, just it, give me one second. It's a Europe friendly time and not particularly yep. US friendly. Okay. Yeah. So we really need somebody in the Eastern time zone. Or somebody who wants to get up really early in the morning. <laughs> or somebody from Asia who wants to stay up late, one way or the other. I mean, Actually, I think, it's only, I think it's only like 4 or 5 p.m. Asian time, so it's not that bad if we have uh, Asian community members who want to pitch in. So the um, proposed time slot, but 
again, I'm not 100% sure that we will get those is 10 UTC, 10 AM UTC on Wednesday. And when I say Wednesday, it should be the 15th of September. Okay. Um, well, if somebody wants to go um, and help answer questions about Kubert, uh, contact Chris um, by, about getting a pass. And, and we'll also um, ask in the larger group. Because we want to have two or three people um, to support Aliche um, to answer all kinds of questions. I'm familiar with this deck enough to answer some questions. Um, that'd be my that would first be fine. Up the front. I mean, honestly, most people, I have a feeling most of the questions are going to be more, uh, since it is KVM4, most questions are going to be more, how do I do virtualization type thing X in Kubert? Oh, OK. Uh, um, so Josh, do you, do you think our uh, current Katakoda uh, demos would be good enough? So I think we I, have... you, um, I don't know what did uh, Alicia, what did you plan on doing as a demo? I haven't any plan because okay. for me it was new also the demo. So uh, maybe okay. we can talk offline about the, I don't know if it has to be local or if you have an environment, I don't know. Um, that was also no, something not in the plan. So um, we can we can talk what you, what you would like to see. The, um, so, um, I, I mean, you know, the purpose of the first 10, 15 minutes is just to kick things off. So yeah. I think any simple demo that shows the functionality of Kubernetes is gonna work. I mean, for this audience, if we have one of the demos no, we can just talk about it, right? Because because the demos will actually migrate something from a non a regular VM to Kubert is complicated to set up. Um, at least the one that I know of, partly because we decided to demonstrate a Windows app. So, um, yeah, that uh... keep it simple. Keep it simple. So just talk about migrating from regular VMs and demo basic functionality. Mm, Chris, do we have other already uh, ready demo, or should I should I do something? Because I don't have right now. I just have a presentation. Uh, I don't have a demo ready. Should we refer to the Raspberry Pi demo in the future as a reference? I. Don't know how fast a demo can be created. I can also volunteer my home setup with Seth to just be like, hey, here's a live migration. Any questions kind of thing. So here's our, let me post it into chat. Here's our current uh, demos in Katakoda. We have uh, installing, basically what uh, the demos are, what we have on the website labs, installing, installing Kubert, uh, doing an image import, doing a, a live migration, and then doing a, a Kubra upgrade. The, the good thing about Katakoda is uh, all the hardware is provided for us, mm -hmm. and uh, if we can develop a, a recipe, and um, it can be repeatable, and, uh, and you can run through the demo in under five minutes. So if there's if there's something else we want to see, I suggest we put it in here mm -hmm. rather than trying uh, trying to deal with uh, with uh, managing oh. hardware at this late in the in the stage. Also, KVM Forum is going to be online only, so I don't know how we could do a hardware demo. But Sam, it sounded like you had something for live migration. We we do. Yeah, no, um, 
I was just volunteering my home cluster, but it sounds like like he wasn't saying that we would need to bring hardware there. He was saying that the Katakota was able to provide the existing hardware and just start the scenario. But either works. I mean, um, Katakota or just, you know, can render YAML real quick and be like, hey, you guys have migration and screen shared, any questions kind of thing. Up to uh, the team. Oh, yeah, you do have the live migration scenario. Okay. <laughs> My recommendation would be to do whatever's going to be easier. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, again, the purpose of this is to kick off discussion. Um, and so you don't want to put a lot of effort into doing a special demo. Mm -hmm. um, you just want, you just want people to see some stuff working so that they know that we're not talking about a theoretical product, but we're talking about, you know, a, a relatively mature open source project that people are already using in production. So Josh, do you do you think we can drop the introduction, uh, the ten minutes introduction about Qvert, or do you want demo and introduction, or just the demo? My my suggestion would be demo and introduction. Okay. Uh, again, I'm I'm assuming that the KVM forum audience will just not be very familiar with Qvert. I don't know. I mean, uh, they, there are a lot of people from virtualization team and they are familiar with Qvert because they okay. had saw it in the past two years, but I'm not familiar with the rest of the audience. So, um, yeah, it, it's a very open format. That's why, that's why I was a bit worried if we Everybody's familiar with Qver, they know more or less what yeah. it is, and uh, they want to know a little bit future direction. Yeah. Uh, the, um, I mean, if that's the case, if it turns out that the whole audience is already familiar with Qvert, um, the, um, you know, sometimes I change speeds on these things, mm -hmm. you know, and ask around, and if I'm expecting to do a lot of introductory material and then um, it turns out that I have a much more experienced audience than I expected, except for a couple of people. Then I'll rush through the intro stuff and do it in less time than I really planned on. Um, uh, you know, to catch up the couple of people who, who are new um, and go into other discussion. Um, I mean, it would honestly be a wonderful thing for the BOF if we had people showing up who already had questions or things they wanted to do or discuss. Like that would be a great thing to happen. It would be annoying because you know you prepare this little mini introduction, you don't really get to use it. But it is way better than the other way around, where you finish the mini introduction and the demo, and you say any questions, and then the session ends because nobody speaks up. Uh, yeah, like, especially because it's an online event, so if yeah. nobody's <laughs> yeah, no, it's the the thing I hate because like normally when you do boffs at full on conferences, it's an evening thing. And you provide snacks and ref refreshments, yeah. right? So you know people have have a beer and some chips and that sort of thing, and they tend to be a lot more talkative than they are in front of the screen. Is there perhaps a scenario where you can post a thread and just say, "Hey, do you have any questions that you would want to ask and be presented in the introductions or post introductions?" As in, like you just go in the you go in the forum before the day. Or like even now, just go in like, hey, do you have any questions or things you want us to review about Qvert? Um, so you can kind of just get some you know, pick and choose what you would want to go over, um, depending if the demo needs to go fast or slow. Uh, so first, I don't know how many people really look at the material, the question before the conference. Uh, we don't. It's not published yet on the schedule, so I. Not quite sure how to publish where people could ask questions, maybe a Google Docs once. Yeah, like Google, like the Google Forms thing, and then you just post it with. I, I'm, I'm assuming that since you said, a, like, an, is it actually an internet form? Um, so I as I as I saw it in the past um, conference, it was just a link for a G, G Meet, uh, and people could join. At the, in the time slot that was allocated for for the bus. Is there perhaps a way to like just send it out like on a mailing list or something similar that also has? 
attendees? I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it depends on how the thing runs. I think they're using Hopin for KVM Forum. Mm -hmm. So there will be a general chat channel during the conference. Yeah. And obviously you could ask questions and stuff there, but it depends from event to event. Um, I, it depends from event to event um, whether or not people actually use that general channel. And I just, you know, I've never been a virtualization person, so I haven't attended KVM Forum before. And, and also KVM Forum in the past has been an in-person event. So, yeah. you know, so I don't think anybody really knows how it'll feel online and, and what channels people will be using and stuff. It's not a bad idea if people are using the, the general chat channel to, to get a feel there. By the way, um, one thing I think you should be aware of is one of the reasons why we're doing a BOF rather than some other kind of session is because the KVM forum organizers felt like some of the attendees um, have a dim opinion of Kubernetes. And so they wanted any Kubernetes session to be something that people would self-select for. Um, so that, you know, rather than, cause, cause we talked like, you know, some kind of general keynote or something and, and they really didn't want that. Um, and it's just something to keep in mind if we're doing something like going into a general chat channel, et cetera. Um, because we'd expect for the Kubernetes boff that the only people who show up are gonna be the people who are into it um, uh, or interested in it. Um, Anytime we do something for the whole general attendees, there's going to be people who are like, I'm in virtualization, I don't want to hear about Kubernetes. Um, um, and so we'd have to be very delicate about how we approach them. So um, speaking of general virtualization, and, uh, and sorry to um, turn the tables away from KVM forum, but I did get a, a message from my NASA buddy um, who's running large virtualization clusters. And apparently their, their pivot to Kubernetes based virtualizations become number one priority in 2022. So that's, uh, and along with that come, would come uh, advertising a NASA logo on our front page. <laughs> he specifically said that. <laughs> So they're getting rid of the old OpenStack cluster? OpenStack uh, is on its way out in a, in a fast way. A more split brain from uh, their messaging service, whatever it's called, RabbitMQ. Yeah. Yeah, he is, uh, all, all this past week, he's been uh, asking, asking me how we handle our community. Um, they're, uh, they're not fond of, of Red Hat corporate and they're, he's asking me how, how deep uh, Red Hat is involved with us um, because they're, they're pure, pure community software. They spend all of their money on, on hardware. Yeah, I, I mean, don't look at the hat behind me, but. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, but this, but this is the reason why Kuvert was, was contributed to the CNCF. Yeah. Right. Is is um, we his group is really about doing stuff fast and pure open source. He has he has a large team and he wants his team to be uh, expert in in pure Linux and and uh, and higher level services. So what they don't have is uh, Kubernetes experience and Kubevert experience. So they're gonna. They're going to be looking to us to for good documentation, and uh, and that will support their team. I I feel it. Yeah, I mean, like I'm all for like Cube Admin or K3s, or I guess if since K3s is a rancher thing in software, if they wanted Cube Admin, sure. Um, I'm from Upstream, so I, I doesn't really matter to me. I joined in Red Hat after I was learning K's from Upstream, so. I'm not even really on a team, but they just pay me a year. 
Yeah, I, I feel that uh, we have really good uh, small scale documentation, but when it comes to scaling out to, to his scale, where he's buying uh, uh, all of his hardware by, by the rack, they, nice. they for basically forklift a rack into their data center and plug everything in and then they do it again the next month. And you're talking like a thousand core, a thousand plus core count and terabytes of memory per rack. I would love to see, like we're working on a project on, well, it's in Red Hat, but it's also like, this is something I started. So it's kind of probably going more to always upstream. Um, just straight up pre booting everything and putting everything from RAM so that it's treated as in um, a, cattle versus sheep kind of mentality. So kind of also the same mentality that, you know, Rancher takes with its actual like icon. Mm -hmm. At the same time, things join and leave the cluster as is using a uh, Linux terminal server project. So um, I use it in my colo just to join and new nodes that I shelve. Obviously it's not by the forklift, but mm -hmm. it's uh, me sliding one in, plugging it into network and it just joins the cluster automatically. Sam, you really need to blog on that stuff. <laughs> hey, I'm down for that. I uh, <laughs> sorry, you blog I blog it, and I will immediately stamp it for uh, <laughs> approval. Okay, yeah. I mean, I have. Uh, it's been a minute since I've got my site up, but yeah, sure. All right. I, it's uh, it's something oh, I've been doing for like almost a year to, now. Submit it to the web to the Kubert website. Is it okay if it is because I, I run like you know like it's I'm running like Minecraft servers and stuff like gaming servers for like customers. It's not using Kubert entirely, but I do use it for a few services. Is it still okay to go on the site? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I can. The, the whole idea of Kubert is to run mixed workloads, run your run your virtual machines right next to your containers. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Definitely. I'll definitely uh see, I'll run something up. Um. I got a new starter too, so I'm planning to, to contribute this entire, was it, slash 24 that I got from Aaron to like a Qbert only scenario where I just have another slash 24 for load balancers for Metal LB. Cool. Hey, Aliche, um, would you be open to a um, KVM form specific meeting like tomorrow or Friday? Yeah, that would be great. I was going to ask you, um, maybe we can, uh uh agree a little bit about um at, at least at the, the beginning of the talk if if yeah. we, are, we don't have plenty of questions uh, i'll i'll uh i'll get Stu and and david Vassel in on that meeting mm -hmm. and uh, then we can really hammer out some specifics for your your present yeah that would be great um uh just uh so um sam right um uh, are you willing to participate um, or should I? I mean, I just need to know if I have to prepare the demo or if somebody else want to do it. Um, as I said, I just have, I already prepared the intro. So this is already done. What is missing for the organized part, uh, that would be the, the demo that is missing for. Uh... Yeah, I, I can walk them through the, um, what's it? the code ready container, or sorry, Catacoda yeah, scenario, and just go for that. Or I can use my you know, cluster here. I, I imagine the Catacoda is actually probably the easier path since every, everything's already set up. Whereas over here, I'd have to like actually kind of re-spin up my stuff cluster and do a few things extra. But uh, yeah, okay, I can open to it. It's gonna be like at 6 a.m. on Wednesday. It's not too bad. Yeah, uh, it's a UTC. I don't know exactly knowing which zone you are, so. so like. She's at 10 a.m. UTC? Yeah. Yeah, Maybe, 6 yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry for you. Oh, you're good. No, it's, it's. I mean, the lead guy here, he was just talking about he got up today, like, what, five o'clock to join this meeting? So <laughs> it's just as bad. Yeah. Well, okay. Thanks a lot for stepping up on that, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Um, Josh, do you want to talk about some of the CNCF incubating stuff?
Um, in order to meet requirements for moving to CNCF incubating, we're straightening out a couple of things that have been to do's for a while in the project. Um, uh, we're not going to resolve either of these things here because we're missing some maintainers. Um, but just so people know what's going on, one is we're trying to straighten out again having um, uh, items clearly marked as roadmap items um, within Kubevert, um, as in planned items, so that people know what's under development. Um, and so David's been going through and marking things as a uh, kind enhancement um, I, and um, linking those to the design proposal process um, so that uh, it's clear which things are sort of planned items for future Kubert development. Um, because one of the things that's going to be happening, this is something we always should have done that we always plan to do. It's why we have the design process. We just haven't really been following it very well. Um, people have just been working on whatever they want to work on and not really doing a lot of um, online paperwork. But for new people who want to contribute to Kubevert um, and for new organizational users who are looking at adopting Kubevert, it's really helpful for them to actually see what's coming. Um, I, you know, and also say from a Red Hat perspective, um, uh, you know, it's very important. Uh, the because Red Hat employs the majority of the people who write code for Kubevert, there's always the worry that if there's not a visible public roadmap, that we have some kind of private roadmap for Kubevert, which we don't really. Um, uh, but 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 people can often think the worst when they're worried about things. So um, the um, uh, so just so you know that's going on. Um, if anybody listening to this or whatever is actually working on a future item, please make sure that that's tagged uh, correctly um, so that we can find it for the roadmap stuff for, for our roadmap search. Um, the second thing is we're adopting an actual sort of formal governance um, of main, maintainer-led governance for uh, Kubevert. Um, you can see the proposal in the pull request. We're kind of at the last stage where we need to update the list of maintainers that the CNCF has because we have not, in fact, updated that since the project joined the CNCF and it is not um, correct anymore since um, uh, some of the people who were at the Cooper pro worked on Cooper project in the beginning have moved on to other things and we've gotten a bunch of new contributors. Um, and so that's getting updated. It's just waiting on getting enough of the old maintainers to plus one it so that we can formally adopt it. That's all I have for the uh, sort of CNCF progress. Um, the, the other big thing we're waiting on, honestly, is availability. As in, we got into August with this, and a lot of the uh, people at the CNCF became not very available. Um, and, and as a result, because um, the way the incubation process works is you have a sponsor who's on the technical operating committee who um, who is the sponsor for your project advancing. And um, our sponsor, Alana, has, has not been very available at all this month. Um, and so there hasn't been a lot of, of sort of jumping into the, okay, let's get this under discussion from TOC. Yeah, I wish uh, we hadn't had that engineering all hands. So we could have some of the seniors to comment on, on these yeah. proposals. Um, but at least we are we're discussing it. Um, we're recording this session. And it, of course, the notes get, uh, get sent out to the mailing list. And um, I know lots of folks watch the recordings. We get about, uh, about 100 um, video views um, per week. 
So people are watching this. So it's good that we're, we're at least discussing it. Uh, and all this governance stuff is a, a lot to digest. Um, please review, please review uh, these pull requests because it, they do affect us all and uh, they are important. And it's uh, interesting to see how the, the project is, is managed. It's not all about just code. It's about the way we do things. Okay, thank you for that, Josh. Uh, being that the being that our attendance is thin this week, um, there's no other agenda items, and the open floor is empty. Um, does anybody else have anything that they would like to discuss? Yeah, um, real quick, I posted in that thread um, a wire guard for going back to the Raspberry Pi cluster thing. Oh. I posted in a thread a, um, a WireGuard configuration. Um, it's what I, I took out the keys, of course, to do site to site. And I imagine that's how we're going to kind of do this joining between our clusters at our locations. Um, has anyone had a moment to test that out and see what they think? I have not. Um, I was working on a SE Linux thing um, that was posted up by Chandler yesterday, and it completely knocked out my laptop. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Um, well, no worries. I, I'm going to make some, you know, additional modifications to it. So it's more easy to digest. Um, in addition to, you know, like I said, kind of seeing what I can back into like a all in one Raspberry Pi image, um, aiming for 64 bit, of course, but um, let me know um, what is needed other than the site to site and like a, a quick start image because um, I'm on board for this. Awesome. Um, is, is that just a Slack conversation or do we have also an issue or uh, that maybe be useful to, to track? Yeah, there's, there's a, there's a oh, the Slack yeah, there that's posted in. Yeah, we also have an issue that we're, uh, that we're um, managing the project through. Let me get that posted really quick. Here we go, Alicia. Thanks. And this is a, a community-wide demo. So if you would like to participate, please join us. Um, and again, we're uh, all things open is mid, mid October, October 18th, I think. Um, so time is now getting tight. Um, so I, I'm thinking that we're going to need to start spinning up Zoom and uh, probably multiple times a week so we can get, get moving on getting this thing put together. Sounds good to me. There's a lot of existing work I have with that. Uh, the, like I said, the PXC things that might help with the Raspberry Pi and getting things up as fast as possible. But I don't want to complicate things too much, so I'll just stick to the DDing an image to an SD card for now. I think that's what I'm going to have to do because I don't have Pixie set up on my network. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a lot it's a lot easier with like LTSP. Um, I don't want to ever write a Pixie thing manually or have to handle that, especially mm -hmm. like with. DHC proxy also accepting uh, a mode where it can have an existing DHCP server. So I just have my router mm -hmm. and then that kind of stuff, but it's crazy as far as the simplicity of just formatting an SD card and plugging in a Pi and just boots. Mm. Okay, um, back to higher level topics. Um, any other high level topics to be discussed? 
Artoj, John, you guys are quiet. I don't have anything, Chris. Yeah, all right. Well, thanks for joining yeah. us anyhow. Hey, right, anytime. Okay. Um, no pull requests to talk about. Uh, let's do a very quick uh, look at the mailing list to make sure all threads are covered. All right. So I just look for threads in the last week, uh, make sure that we have a conversation that has been going on and we are not leaving people in limbo. Um, Mark Deneve is looking for NVIDIA on Windows. Is anybody here uh, running NVIDIA GPUs with Windows on Kubert? Can't say that I have. It's on my list though. I want to make a gaming machine, but that's on the back there. Oh, I talk to Mark all the time offline, so I'll take that thread. Maybe I can connect him with uh, with Brian. Oh, geez. <laughs> Romans posted that uh, our CI credentials may have been leaked. So be aware if you're doing anything with CI. Uh, it looks like he revoked all, all secrets and and cycled them, and he apologizes for the inconvenience. And that takes us back to Josh's note about, about email addresses. Um, so a thing happened, um, a couple weeks ago, um, we were using an external email provider to provide, uh, kubert.io email addresses. And, uh, we've opted to drop that service and just forward our, our security and our privacy, um, at kubert.io email addresses and change them directly to the the mailing list. So we're all gonna get um, security and privacy emails, which is a good thing that reduces the single point of failure on me. Okay. So that's, uh, that's it for mailing list review. Uh, we don't have any, we don't have enough people for bug scrub. So all in favor of skipping bug scrub this week, say aye. Aye. <laughs> all right. Next week, we're doing a good bug scrub because we have, we have not done a bug scrub in one, two, two weeks so it'll be three weeks next week that's too oh, long no, I, I just remembered i won't be able to be here next week i have a doctor's appointment oh man <laughs> if it's for your eye i i will let you do that <laughs> oh you notice man yeah this thing is bugging me trust me <laughs> don't skip uh, your eye doctor appointments <laughs> Yeah, I have uh, this thing in my, I don't know, I woke up with one day and I just got bad. So I've been trying to wait for it to wear down and keep it clean. 
but it's been puffing up a bit. Ooh. Okay, um, we're at 748. We had a lot of material today, so I was, I'm surprised that we, uh, we made it. Uh, so that will be the end of this week's meeting. Um, thank you everybody for joining. Um, note for all the Red Hatters, I know it's tough that um, with the scheduling conflict. So thank you for being here. And I'm gonna end the meeting now. Thank you everyone. Bye.